right, the hundred has now come and gone. The fireworks have disappeared into the night sky. The dust has settled and we're returning to cricket normality with the blast and an England test match, all vying for attention with the football and whatever else. Um, but we just thought we'd have a little look and see how the hundred has gone on and where it fits in cricketing schedules and priority. And the best person I could think of without exception, to talk about the 100 and in cricket in general, is our guest on 98 Night Out this week, Mr. Charles Di- Charles, oh, I'll edit that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should edit it. I, don't, I really don't think you should. It's great to be with you, Dave Mutu. And, um, you know, <laughs> go on, try, no, I want you to try and get my name out again. Keep all of this in. No edits. I will. I will. I'll try again. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, good afternoon, good morning to Mr. Charlie Dagnall. Yes, available in all time zones. Hello, Dazzler, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so starstruck and so excited, Charlie. That's really- yeah. Well, I can, I can, I can totally understand that, and um, it's nice that you've uh, basically, as you described it, got the best person to uh, talk about all the upcoming cricket and the hundred that's just gone. Um, I'd like to sort of put a little. Um, asterisk next to that uh, which sort of says the only one who is probably available at five o'clock on a Monday afternoon to talk to you so 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 yes possibly but no great to be with you again. So you are a really busy man and even you know 100 aside over the last few years uh, you've been very involved with coverage across all the channels and across all the formats of radio, internet, Sky, BBC, whatever but of all the people, and I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, of the coverage, I thought you were the commentator that, to me, grasped the nettle with what the 100 was all about and seemed to buy into it and deliver it. And with the funky sunglasses matched only by the funky moves and also the way that you conveyed the game to probably a new audience that was watching, I think you summed it up. Um, what were your thoughts of, as, as the thing got going and uh, as the momentum built? Well, bless you for saying so. That's very, very kind. Um, uh, just uh, just one thing on that. They're actually my prescription glasses. They're not sunglasses. Uh, oh, really? The story goes, basically, I went into Vision Express and uh, they said, do you want a tint on your glasses? I went, mm, mm, go on then. Uh, of this yellow tint that as it turned out they were sort of like quite uh, noticeable and, and and stuff and it's sort of like part of me but but that's be that as it may that's that's by the by um it, it's look i wasn't originally going to be doing any hundred um and then brian henderson from sky sort of asked if i was available for it and of course i said yeah um and was dying to be involved, absolutely dying to be involved. And that's the kind of life of a freelancer, if you like. But um, it's, it, look, I will always, always, and, and I think Mark, um, sorry, Butch is, is very similar as our numerous other commentators as well. We will comment on what we see in front of us. If something's good, it's good. And if something's bad, we'll say so. And we got a lot of grief, and it still will happen, and it was always going to happen, especially on social media channels, where you say, oh, well, you're going to say it's fantastic because you're being paid to do so. Well, no, actually, that's not the case. If the if there was a crowd, I, I slipped up once and said it was a full house, when it wasn't a full house, and people climbed into me because of it. Now... <laughs> It was 24,000 in a 27,000 seat stadium. So no, it wasn't, strictly speaking, a full house. If you want to pile on me for that, carry on. I'm not interested. Um, What I see is people going to the cricket, people going to a game of cricket and enjoying themselves. And yes, it's new and it was fresh and there was live bands and there was DJs and you want to hit a different type of audience. And I think it genuinely did. There will always be those who look at the numbers they look at the numbers from the ecb there have been some that have have come out today i don't have them to hand because i'm using the phone where i would go and look at them but the engagement on television the engagement at the grounds uh the percentage of people who have never been to cricket before who've been to go and watch the 100 and had a good experience there it's very they're very good numbers now those who are against the 100 
will turn around and say, well, what about X or what about Y? And there's this that hasn't been taken into consideration and that. Bizarrely, I don't care. I couldn't care less. Are the grounds full of people watching a game of cricket? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing, right? And cricket's on TV on both terrestrial channels and Sky television channels. And people are watching it. So that's a good thing, right? So I want to see if one more kid picks up a bat rather than kicks a ball, that's a win for me. But essentially, does there need to be some scheduling changes? Yes, I actually, I believe that there is. And I, I'm going to give the ECB a, oh, not that they would care, but I, I, I give them a pass on this year because of COVID last year, trying to squeeze in the new competition, focusing short, solely on that. Now we've had a year of it. Now let's go back to the drawing board and see what else we can do around that. Is it great that there's no championship cricket for test players to play, you know, to get themselves back in form or to get themselves used to the Red Bull? No, I don't think that's great, but let's have a look at that next year and see what can be done. But overall, you know, I had a good time. And, and you know, when the music's blaring, I can't help but have a dance. I'm crap at dancing. I'm terrible. But but I can't help but have a bop. I'm the guy at the wedding who's first on when they when they hear Sister Sledge. That's it. I'm on. There you go. Why am I me up? Um, so so the music's on, and I can't help but I don't know it. I had to Shazam. What this? You'll enjoy this, right? Sorry, I'm answering this in a very long-winded way, but you'll enjoy this. So we're doing a game at wherever we're doing a game. And this, it was Trent Bridge. And this tune, the DJ, very cool DJ, blaring out this tune. And I go, I quite like this. This is quite good. Hadn't a clue. Oh, is this what the new music is nowadays? Oh, no, okay. So I Shazammed it. And I, it came up on Shazam and it came up Calvin Harris uh, with such a song. And I'm like, oh, it's fantastic. I'll download that. Oh, I like this new music. Turned out it was from 2009. So that shows you, <laughs> shows you how up to date I am. There was the there was a couple of DJs down in Cardiff. They were called Girl Talk. I loved them because they actually threw in a proper old school number in and amongst the uh, the new stuff. So look, it is different. It's not you're not going to please everybody, but I don't care. All I care about is are we giving a good um, account of ourselves on the TV? Are we making it fun? Are we having fun? Is the cricket the thing that's going to sell it? Is the Did the cricket we see sell the competition? Forget the DJs, forget the live music. Yeah, it did. It really did. And especially in the women's game. I can't, I cover the women's game a lot. In, in fact, almost exclusively. And that was my big tick from that. Double-headed games. Um, more people getting to see how good we've been banging on about the women's game, sound how good it is. People got to see it, so they've gone, Oh, oh it is good, you were right. Well, you know, and that's only going to improve. So, for me, it's a big tick. We're not paid to say it is great, um, we're paid to say what we see in front of us, and what we saw in front of us was good fun, it was good cricket, and there was a you get you get you know, drawn in with, with the crowd that are there. Um, so, I, you know, I loved it. I have to say, I really loved it. And I can't wait for next week. When is the County Blast T20 quarterfinals? Can't wait. Yeah, you know, people, people overcomplicate it, Darren. They do. And I get paid to turn up and commentate on a game of cricket. Do I care what game it is? No. Because I love the game. If it's 20 overs, if it's 100 balls, if it's test match cricket, <laughs> count me in. I'm there. And, and that's and my job is to convey what is happening on that particular day in that particular format. So just get, going back about an hour and a half when you started answering that question. Good one. Um, Good. You talk about content. <laughs> I, know that, I know that Dinesh Kartik's coming on. Um, and, and so I'm basically trying to use all the time I possibly can to uh, make sure that he only has like a minute or two minutes, something like that. <laughs> That's all he'll need, isn't it? Well, wouldn't um, it? But yeah, you mentioned mentioned some numbers, and I think some of the numbers that I saw earlier, and I may be wrong um, because I also haven't got them to hand, but I think I saw something like ten or fifteen million uh, viewers over the TV, of which, and I don't know how they know this, but of which they think five million were brand new to cricket. Now, if that is correct, then 
absolutely we should we should be all over that and we should embrace it well yeah i mean that was the whole point the whole reason i mean there's a lot of stuff that you see on social ma media webby and i think we're close enough now that i can call you webby um is that there's a lot of misinformation out there a lot of a lot of people sort of saying well this could have been done with the blast they could have done the same thing put the blast on free to air cricket no actually you couldn't you couldn't do that because the rights deal that was signed was signed for a new competition they didn't want to do it with county county cricket they wanted a standalone game per day much like the big bash and much like the indian premier league okay one game on at that particular time the blast doesn't do that can't do that uh, and also free to air didn't want it they wanted a new comp and also it takes too long now the blast takes too long now could the blast be shortened as in time taken yeah absolutely they muck around and faff around and too many meetings and all that sort of stuff they can of course the blast could have been shortened but the whole point of this rights deal was the new competition there are too many counties, 18 of them, to get a standalone game for one a day. It's just not feasible. And that's why the competition was in, in, um, was invented. Now, yes, it was invented as a T20 comp originally, but they wanted to do something different. That is a completely different conversation. But that is why they didn't do that with the blast. And, and there, were, there were other reasons because of it. So five million... If there is five million new viewers to cricket, then and, it, and and I'm sure there is an element of spin in those numbers, Webby. I'm totally sure that there will be. However, even if it if it was one million or if it was two million, I, they're watching cricket. It's it's um, if they've never watched it on TV before then what a great way. Now, what I think is important, if and and if those numbers are correct. What we've got to turn around and say, well, if you like that, have a look at this, because this is on now. And if you like the tactics there, well, it's expanded to in 50 over cricket or 20 over cricket or test match cricket. There are different formats of these games, but first you want to catch them. You want to catch those, those people, get them either watching or youngsters playing, because that's the whole point. We all want to play the game. You want them down at Billericay. You want the kids down at Brentwood. You want that interaction of the, the game on TV or the game at the ground and the game locally and, and, and um, uh, within the communities. And that's where the line has to be drawn. So if those numbers are right, then goodness me, it's maintaining those numbers. You don't want there to be drop off. You want it to be bigger and better and stronger. Um, you want people, what I did find interesting was the association that people had with their teams in a very short space of time. You know, people supporting the Oval Invincibles and wanting their team to win. I didn't expect that. I genuinely didn't. I expected people to come along and have a look to see what it was all about. To see partisan crowds at these venues for the Birmingham Phoenix or the Oval Invincibles or for the um, for the Southern Brave, I was I was staggered it happened that quickly. I really was. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, I was at Lords on Saturday for the final, and um, they had a couple of. Uh, concessions set up selling merchandise and the queues were incredible oh. Oh. and the merchandise is really clever as well the bucket hats it's a bit different to what you'd see at an england game or something like that people couldn't get enough of it totally they sold out at uh, trent bridge sold mm. out of, of kids merchandise and caps and yellow shirts and and all of that sort of stuff well you know that can't yeah that's that's good that's yeah. good affiliation with you with with the city team now you're gonna get and i'm gonna choose a county at uh, complete random somerset <laughs> now the grief that i've had from somerset supporters for enjoying myself i mean you won't believe it and i adore somerset the county and i think i actually think the hundred did miss a trick in not putting a team down in the southwest um rather than the welsh fire but i understand why they did those things is there room for another team maybe maybe what about the northeast um, you know, up in Durham, you've got a fantastic facility there. You've got a fantastic facility down in Taunton to host, to host big games too. So that's, that's down the road. Um, because I do think that in the world of social media right now, it has created a them and us 
in the world of cricket, which I didn't think needed to happen. Or I think it could have been avoided. Those who like the 100 and those who don't like the 100. Well, you know, I think there were some PR problems right at the outset, which weren't necessarily um, dealt with. I think the existing cricket fan could have been incorporated more. Um, but that's history now. Now what it's key to do is to try and repair that relationship rather than having it as them and us. And, and I, that's what I would like. I just want everyone to get along. Guys, I just want there to be peace and love and harmony in the world. And, uh, you know, and, you know, bring in the Dalai Lama to cool everybody out. I don't know. But I think I think it can be done. I think you're right. I mean, I was sceptical when this all reared its head a couple of years mm -hmm. ago about where are these new fans coming from? I'm surely you like cricket and whatever else. But I mean, that's the thing that's been that blown me away is that you have genuinely had people that would have never gone anywhere near yeah. a T20 or a test match have come up to the come along to this and enjoyed it and, and, and have gone back. My son went to a, a London Spirit game a few weeks ago with a load of his school chums and a few girls. Uh, and the girls were just sort of dragged along because it was cheap. And that's another factor for getting people in. Yeah. They liked it so much, so they went back with their families uh, the next time Spirit played. Those are people that don't even... Do I, well, that's it. Do I think that eventually ticket prices will rise and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I think it will. The more popular the thing, that is the nature of the beast. But you've got to get people down there first. You know, with anything new, you've got to, to get down there. Um, and, and you've got to entice them in. And, and I, think that's a, I think that's across the board. That's, that would be what happened. What people don't still get is, yes, cricket is our sort of national summer sport, but in the context of the world, it's niche. It still is a niche sport. Football rules. Football rules the way. And you've got a very limited time to get in a competition where there is no football to entice people down to your sport where football is not played. Now, you've got to remember that, you know, the football season lasts from, well, now, August, right the way through till May, June, even. Then you've got the Euros. Mm. So then you've got one month, one month to try and entice some kids to go and watch a different sport or to play a different sport and stuff. It's not a lot. And then you're also going to battle with Wimbledon and then the Formula One, the other summer things that are going on. Wimbledon, Formula One, the Open Golf and uh, the World Snooker in uh, April, or whatever it might be, right? So football rules. And then, you know, you think about rugby and the amount of people who love rugby, but it's still niche when you compare it to football. So, so it is important to, for people to say, oh, there's not a new audience out there. Yes, there is. In comparison to how many people are in this country and actually how many go and watch a game of cricket, the same people will be watching test matches at Lords year on year on year on year. And they'll do it every year. The same people. So that's, you know, 20,000 of the same people who will be going to Lords. Yes, I know more want to go and do it, but prices, et cetera, et cetera. There is actually a very small fraction of people that they're targeting. So why wouldn't you go out and try and have a look and see if there's anybody else out there? You'd be bonkers. And people don't see sport as, as a kind of business. I, I'm not a business person, but that's just common sense to me. The, the main complaint, uh, uh, there's an interesting conundrum here. Um, the 100 as it is, you, I agree with you, it's easier to expand a competition than it is to cut it down so there is probably room to add one maybe two teams but mm -hmm. i'm just worried that one of the successes was that you could follow this it was it was a month or just over a month start to finish yeah so it was really easy to keep on touch. and the fact that it was every night there it was on tv in front of you you know we sat and watched every night um yeah and if you start to swell it does it lose that kind of fast hit um, yeah, impact. yeah, it's a really good point, and it's a good question. And the answer is, I don't know. What you don't want to do, as we've seen so many times, apart from in India, where they'll, you know, the IPL could last nine months for them, and that's everybody would still go and everybody would still watch it. You don't want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. 
so what it's, it's it's finding that balance they did it with the blast originally originally it was five games right you play five games and it was packed it was heaving couldn't move for people then they increased it to about eight or nine or whatever it was 10 and that was about, that was about right then they wanted to play like 16 games of it so i never people are going oh god it's god it's going on long they've done it with the big bash the big bash Last so long. Oh, my God. And then the finals. I love the finals of the Big Bash now. Right, if you're in sixth, you get to play the person who's third. And then if they lose that, then they may play again. But they'll play on a Tuesday uh, <laughs> because uh, because the people who have finished in fifth have to do a lap of the ground three times before they <laughs> play the people who are second. And then second will play fourth, but whoever loses that game will go on to play. And you're like, what? You need yeah. a, it's like the most ridiculous algorithm needed to get to the finals. Simplifying things is the way forward. Can we afford to put two more teams in so that would make X more games? I, I don't know. I actually don't know. Or do you remove the um, franchise? Yeah. Could you? Could you? Well, here's the thing: if a franchise isn't performing, then move that franchise. That's what they do in American sports, yeah. you know, um, yeah. and they've done it. You know, the Houston Oilers weren't, weren't, you know, raking in the amount of money that they should be. People didn't go. So grand, they went off to Tennessee and moved the whole franchise. Then Tennessee Oilers and so on and so forth. Now there's a franchise back in Houston. But my point is, is that can these be moved? Yeah, they can be. This happened in, in the IPL. That's right. Who was yeah. it the coach, coachy and Deccan Chargers and all of that sort of stuff? Yeah. Out of that. Gone. So I don't know about moving. I would like to think that, that, you know, if you add an extra week, would that incorporate the extra amount of games? Possibly. I don't know. Um, but, but I think that could be done. I don't think it's beyond the realms of, of the capacity of everybody to, to acknowledge that that could be done. Um, obviously, other things would have to give. But as long as you hit markets that are not being hit now, so you don't want a third London team or you don't want to, you know, whatever. You know, I think Newcastle and, and um, the South, Bristol, probably, um, you know, are big enough. But, but whether they're big enough stadiums and all of that sort of stuff, that, you know, I'm, I'm going down a, a, an endless road here. Um, let's just have a look. Let's have a look. Let it work for a couple of three years and then reevaluate and say, well, what's good? What's bad? What else do we need to do or what can we leave as it is? And, and, and you know, everyone's very eager to jump on something after one year of existence. Well, it'll be even bigger next year because you'll have the arrival of the big name superstars, um, the Chris yeah. Gales, the Davey Warners, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Which adds another dimension to everything. Totally. Okay, right. County cricket fans are up in arms saying that this is a threat to county cricket. I, I kind of feel that they left the back door open by not being on top of uh, the potential of, of what could be done. And I think this has held up a bit of a mirror to, if you really want to sell the game, bring new people, this is the kind of thing you do. I still feel that even when you go to a T20 sometimes, it's a bit like dad's disco and dad dancing and uh, not quite in tune with, uh, you know, playing high ho silver lining isn't going to drag your 14-year-olds in. <laughs> um, and I did. I did admit that when I saw Jack Jones was appearing at Lords on Saturday, I thought, "Oh, is, is Matt Munro uh, also on the bill?" Um, but, uh, no. Caroline works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, where's well, um, Rob for the football, isn't it? <laughs> it's look, county cricket. I, 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 I look. I will always be an advocate of county cricket. I, I think there needs to be a realization that 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 it still has to exist. It does. Um, or else where, where your cricket is going to come from? Where's the pathway that they that they have from club cricket to representative cricket to then county cricket? Now, I still maintain that test cricket is still the ultimate form of the game. That is where you are judged. That is what cricket is. To me, it, it will always be. I, I never played it, but I played a lot of championship cricket. I absolutely adored it. That was where you got you judged as a cricketer. Now, the landscape is changing. People do have to understand that. And cricketers' viewpoints may be changing as well. They might not be able to earn as they can earn in franchise leagues around the world. That's just market, the market doing it for you. You know, I, I, if I was had my time again, would I consider it? Yeah, granted, no one would sign me. But you know what I mean. It would be 
it, it, it would be very difficult knowing that I probably wasn't going to play international cricket to not then work on all of my limited over skills, all my T20 skills, batting, fielding, slow balls, quicker balls, slow ball bouncers, knuckle balls, all that sort of stuff. Because I knew that I would get a better chance of earning a really good career without playing county cricket, uh, without playing international cricket. I think there is a place for the blast. I do. I think the county should have an opportunity to earn because that is their big earning thing. Um, can they update it a little bit? Yeah. Do I think Sweet Caroline should be got away with? No. I think there is a place for it. And I think there's a place because, again, it's the alienation of the current fan. It shows that they actually do like that. You know, you get to the finals day and the hollies is full of people wearing fancy dress and they all sing along. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think if the 100 want to get away from that, that's fine. But yeah, keep it for the, for the county stuff. That's, you know, that's, that's all very well. It's just different. What you're hoping for, you don't sell a cricket ticket on the, on the fact that there's a DJ there, either who's going to play Sweet Caroline or not. You sell it on the cricket. And if the cricket's good, then that is the most important thing. As we've seen with the hundred, and that was we've seen with the blast. Now I expect to see with the blast this coming um, this coming week. So, you know, I, I think I think there is a place for it. I would hope that the blast continues. What I would do, and I'm going to quickly so, and this is not well thought out at all. I've not written it down. I've not considered it. But my um, opinion is regarding scheduling is that the, the 100 stays where it is. It will have to, it's got to, right? And the counties get very well paid, 1.3 million pounds from the revenue of the TV deal so that the 100 can be where it is. So that's where that will stay. But do I think we need to play 14 county championship games? No. No other country in the world plays 14, 14 four-day games. They all play 10, right? So if you, if you divide your 18 counties into six, three sixes, you're then playing home and away 10 county championship matches a year. Do the same with the Blast. Then you're playing 10 Blast games a year. In three conferences, if you have to, yes, I know Middlesex will one day want to play against Lancashire, but, but you know, get through to the final one. Have three regional conferences of North, South and West, uh, or whatever it is, at East, uh, North and South and everybody else. Um, and then they will play each other in their conferences and they play in a final, Bob Willis Trophy final. I, I think that works for me. You've then got 10 county championship games. Can they be played at different times? Yes, they can. You can put more county championship matches in the heart of the summer. Why not kick off the year with a blast? Why not kick it off? Have three weeks of just solid, solid blast games. Get people in the, in the mood for it and or whatever. Or that you want to play 50 overs, make it a knockout. Make it a proper FA Cup knockout. And then there's, or, or whatever it is. There are lots of ideas out there. County cricket, for me, still has very much a role to play. And I would hate to see it go. Um, do I think that, on the flip side, are there counties around there who would go out of existence if it wasn't for the £1.3 million handout? Yeah, they would. So is it a sustainable business model? No, probably not. But that's not a decision for me. And I, I, I would be sad if Leicestershire went or, you know, I played for them. You know, yeah. I was proud to play for them. Would I be sad if they didn't exist anymore? Yeah, I would. Be really sad. But, you know, that's the market again. That is, you know, not in my control. It's not, you know, that, that has to be um, dealt with down the line. But I, I think it can exist. You just got to be smart about it, and also those who like county cricket have got to accept that the hundred is there, and those who like the hundred have got to accept that if they like those players, that's where they come from, and I really believe that they can coexist. However, it's not for me to do. It's someone who gets paid a lot more than I do. They can sort it out. I'll just suggest it. Loving it, loving it. Um, my cheapo Zoom account is about to wind us out so i think it's probably a good a good place to stop um, loads of things to think about um if you have if you do you disagree listeners viewers do you disagree do you agree with what charlie's saying have you got thoughts of your own have you got ideas everyone let us know get in touch message the show you know to get in touch with all the usual channels email radio at phoenixfn.com 
title it nine take them out and we'll get it and we'll read it we'll read it out on air but um charlie brilliant to see you and to hear from you fantastic any time any time um and, and maybe uh maybe upgrade your your zoom account uh, just throwing it out there um especially if you've got me on um but but no it's always a pleasure and i'll always talk to you whenever you whenever you fancy it so um so yes but obviously you won't get any from who disagrees uh naturally with what i've got to say it was all very well reasoned and well thought out but no what, anytime always great to talk to you guys and what what musical track do you want us to play oh uh, uh, mm, i've not had anything prepared so i will say um the ooh, what can i have anything anything you want anything i want i'll tell you what let's get a bit cool yeah right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with uh the i think it's the 20 ls l y 20 s i s y l version right right of gregory porter's liquid spirit oh so i'm incorporating the new with the old it's like a remix version of liquid spirit by gregory porter check it out it's the uh, ysl version or something like that get right. that get that wrap that round your ears brilliant coming up next uh charlie dagnall absolutely super many many thanks for giving us your time uh, and we'll catch up soon will do thanks guys